Lucas Oil Stadium, downtown Indianapolis, ready to rock tonight. Mark Sanchez leading the New York Jets into town against Peyton Manning and his Indianapolis Colts in this AFC wild card playoff game. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrew Kramer, welcome to Indianapolis. Hope we have an encore for you. What a game in Seattle. The Colts this season wound up 10 and 6, won their last four games withstood a barrage of very impactful injuries. Peyton Manning was forced to throw 42 passes per game this season. If they win tonight, they earn a trip to Pittsburgh next weekend. Meanwhile, the Jets started the year with a record of 9 and 2, wound up with a mark of 11 and 5. Super Bowl or bust has been Rex Ryan's mantra throughout the season. They got to the AFC Championship game last year, had an 11 point lead here blew it and picked up a lot of players in the offseason just for games like this one and Chris we know that the calling card for the Jets has been defense but Rex Ryan said to us last night my offense and my special teams will have to win this game what's your take well last year in the championship game really Mark Sanchez was nothing more than a caretaker of this offense but he's going to have to be a heck of a lot more than that tonight because essentially the Jets are now admitting that no matter how good their defense may be they're never going to really completely shut down Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is anything but a caretaker. Is he alone enough to win this game? Well, you go up and down the roster of these two teams, and I don't think there's any question that there's more talent on the Jets' side of the ball. But the Colts have Peyton Manning, which makes for a fair fight. I think this is going to be a good one tonight. Should be a great one. From Indianapolis, it will be the Jets against the Colts in this AFC wild card battle on NBC. I mean, to say it's not personal, no, that's not true. I mean, it is, it's definitely personal. And, and I hold him personally responsible for me getting beat twice. And as much as I admire and respect Peyton Manning, I don't think there's anybody in this league that I, I want to beat more than I want to beat Peyton Manning. Every team that I've played against when he's been the coordinator, they've been extremely well coached. They're smart. Uh, I think they're advanced in, in what they're able to, to communicate mm -hmm. and, and change. You know, they kind of audible. Uh, like an offense, and uh, it is always a challenge. It's a grind uh, preparing for him. It may be a grind, but Peyton has had Rex's number in the regular season. Manning three and one, postseason two and zero. Oh. Six games total, and four of those Rex was the Baltimore defensive coordinator. Two as the Jets head coach, and the one loss for Manning was in the game where he wasn't even playing at the end. It was last year when they decided they'd rather stay healthy and go to a perfect season and he had come out of the game meanwhile it was Jim Caldwell who had led that team to the 14 and 0 start last year in his rookie season took the team to the Super Bowl on Tony Dungy staff for many years going back to when Tony was at Tampa Bay so Jim Caldwell and Rex Ryan each in their second seasons as head coaches the Jets will kick off. Indy won the toss and they elected to receive and the Jets don't mind that because the Jets won nine coin tosses this year and eight times elected to the first so they like to start on defense Nick Falk to kick off Dominic Rhodes who is now back with the Colts for a third stint ready to receive and off we go from Indianapolis and Rhodes will take it four yards deep down it in the end zone here come the Colts, and let's meet them. Peyton Manning, University of Tennessee. Joseph Badai, Louisiana State. Reggie Wayne, the U. Pierre Garçon, Mountain. Mm. Brody Eldridge, Oklahoma. Jacob Tammy, University of Kentucky. Charlie Johnson, Oklahoma State. Kyle Devan, Oregon State University. Jeff Saturday, North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Mike Pollock, Arizona State. Jeff Lincolnbuck, Cincinnati. And one guy missing, Ryan Dean, who was expected to play, but he was deactivated. And Manning starts with a pass to Garçon, who makes a juggling catch and gets nine yards. He's tackled just shy of the 30-yard line by Brodney Poole. Well, we're going to have some great matchups on the outside. Here's Cromarty on the outside. And one thing you'll notice about him is he basically will allow slants. He's going to let guys inside. He plays more outside. So if the Colts are slow throwing slants tonight, it'll be that way. Second and inches, just shy of the 30-yard line. Manning flanked by a die in the backfield. 
Moves to his right, and the pass is incomplete. Tried to get that to the tight end, Jacob Tammy, who's done a very good job in the absence of Dallas Clark, who was hurt earlier in the season. In fact, Tammy has caught more passes over the last 10 weeks than anybody in the league. And Manning goes right to the snap, and the Jets are equal to the task. Rodney Poole comes up to stop Joseph Adai. And so the Colts start with a second and in inches and wind up with a fourth down and the punting unit coming in. I tell you that is really some play right out of the back here. Brodney Poole's going to come up and as this thing gets bounced back you can see Bart Scott taking Jacob Tanny and just driving him in the backfield and then Brodney Poole from an unsettled position comes up and makes the play. That was something. Pat McAfee will punt and Santonio Holmes who has only returned a handful of punts this season is back to bring it back instead he'll wave it off lets it bounce and it will roll inside the 30 yard line and Holmes gets pushed out of the way the crowd thinks he touched the ball but the officials say he did not he did not and it will be the Jets ball of the 26 yard line he boy he came close didn't he that is so ridiculous what San Antonio Holmes just did now, now did he get pushed into the ball here he may have on the tail end of this thing no nope don't think so but if you're going to let it go let it go wow almost a huge mistake right off the bat on special teams for the Jets who figure to have the edge in this one against the Colts on their special team side and now Jim Caldwell seeing the replay he thinks it may have grazed the leg of Holmes so he is going to challenge you've got to challenge a minute and 31 seconds into the game Gene Steratore is the referee not the hands nope. or the inside of the left leg oh close but I don't think it ever did do you No, I don't either and Steratore is going coming over to the Colts sideline. Indianapolis is challenging the ruling on the field of the first touching by the kicking team. Timeout. I don't think he's going to win it. But who knows? A challenge a minute and a half in. Gene Steratour has already looked, and here comes the call. After review, the ruling is confirmed. The receiving team did not touch the football. Indianapolis will be charged with this first time out. That is also Indianapolis's first challenge. So what Caldwell did here is by challenging another look. It doesn't touch anybody. It comes close. Caldwell thought, at least after hearing from the guys upstairs, he might win the challenge. He doesn't challenge very often. He's been successful. And the key thing here, Chris, and it's clear it doesn't touch anybody, is that Caldwell now has only one challenge for the rest of the night. So what ended up being a very poor play by San Antonio Holmes works out for the best for the Jets. Absolutely. Ball at the 27 yard line. And now the Jets first offensive play is a short pass and good coverage. And that's Keller who gets covered on the play and it's second down and 10 as we take a look at the Jets starters. Mark Sanchez, USC. LaDainian Tomlinson, TCU. Tony Richardson, Auburn. San Antonio Holmes, the Ohio State University. Where are the notes? Lloyd Carr's University of Michigan. Dustin Keller, Purdue University. Roberta Shell Ferguson, University of Virginia. Matt Slauson, Nebraska. Nick Mangold, the Ohio State University. Brandon Moore, Illinois. Damian Woody, Boston College. Second and ten, LaDainian Tomlinson is the running back. And the longtime Charger has a first down and a lot more. And LaDainian Tomlinson with a rebirth in New York. It was kind of a messy ending in San Diego. A 23-yard gallop on his first carry of the night. So many times you see guys flash from the outside with this Colts defense. And LT just saw it in advance. Tony Richardson with a nice pickup block there. And LT played so well early in the season, but really hasn't been much of a factor since. Raylan Edwards on the outside with a good block. Now you've got Brad Smith who comes in to play quarterback. They also use him in the Wildcat. He's their kick returner, and he gives it to Tomlinson. And Tomlinson in that last carry, that was his longest ever carry in a postseason game. He's played in eight postseason games. He's had spectacular success in the regular season, 
but he's still trying to make his mark with a huge postseason performance. So Smith will come in and out, comes out after one play. It'll be second down and nine. Tomlinson and Sean Green are their running backs, but right now they go with LT at the outset of the game. And they set up a screen to Tomlinson, and that's a great tackle by Cavell Connor, a rookie linebacker out of Clemson. We talked about the Indianapolis injuries. Gary Brackett's missed a lot of time. Clint Sessions missed a lot of time, and guys like Connor have picked it up. Matt Slauson's the guy that took over for Alan Fanica, and Slauson just couldn't get there to make this block. This is really set up beautifully. If they can get that kickout block on the outside, Slauson is too slow. Third down, 14. This can be as noisy as any place in the league, and it is right now. Quick flip. Cotchery hammered at the 47 yard line and the Jets will punt Cornelius Brown another rookie off the street free agent from Texas El Paso making the tackle. Yeah pretty conservative call that time by the Jets they were backed up and instead of putting Mark Sanchez in a tough spot just flip one out there and going to punt the ball. Steve Weatherford to do the punting Blair White back to receive it. That nose down kick is angled and it goes into the end zone. Blair White's going to come out with it, but it was ruled a touchback. Marquise Cole almost made a spectacular play for the Jets. But the Colts get it to the 20 when we come back. It is freezing in Indianapolis today, but very warm inside. Hydration when this game moves along could be a factor it normally is at Lucas Oil Stadium third year here for the Colts after moving from the RCA Dome which was next door from the 20 yard line and he starts this drive Joseph the guy missed about half the season with the neck injury and another one of the you know we talked about the Colts injuries we talked about the linebackers the secondary the offensive line and then he was obviously of course a vital cog and they were able to make it through yeah and a die is the the one that Peyton trusts the most as far as protection is concerned such a big part of this offense and especially against the Jets figuring out who it is that is coming on the blitz and Peyton loves having Joseph a die back for that role second down and six. Has time and the pass is caught just short of the first down. Blair White with Eric Smith making the tackle, and the Colts will have a third and one. Sometimes when you get fancy, Jason Taylor is going to drop back in coverage here. He's obviously not a very good cover guy. He's a pass rusher, so Peyton just kind of fooled around with him a little bit. As Peyton looked him off, came back and got the completion to set up the third and short. Three and out on their first drive after they had a second and inches. Third and one here. And Manning will swing it to the outside, and that won't get the first down. That is White cutting toward the sideline. And again, Brodney Poole, who made the tackle on the third down play on the first series, makes the tackle here, and the Colts forced to kick for the second time. Well, Antonio Cromartie right here is going to hold Pierre Garcon. And this would have been potentially a touchdown. He grabs him by the jersey, and with the speed of Garcon, if he had been allowed that release, may well have scored. Now, Cotchery is back to field this kick after Holmes had the near disaster on the first punt. He fair catches it at the 39 yard line. Good field position for the Jets when we come back. Rex Ryan. Going over things with his defense as Sanchez leads the Jets up to the 38 yard line, their second possession. Sean Green is the running back. We saw Tomlinson on the first series. They figured to alternate too much of the night. Off the play fake. He gets buried, and that's Daniel Muir, the right tackle, big number 90 of Planson. 
as usual, the key is the pass rush right there of Dwight Freeney. He's going to force Sanchez to step up, and by that time, Daniel Muir came off and was able to make the stack. Muir getting an opportunity tonight, and he plays a lot, but Antonio Johnson, who, according to Gary Brackett, the middle linebacker, was playing better than anybody, is out with a chest injury. Second and 15 after the five-yard sack. Edwards is the motion man. Here's Green. And Green had a big postseason last year up to the 41 yard line. Let's take a look at the Indianapolis defense. Robert Mathis, Alabama AM. Daniel Muir, Kent State. Billy Moore, Southern Cal. Dwight Freeney, Syracuse. Pat Anger, Iowa. Gary Brackett, the Arbor. Cabell Connor, Clemson. Justin Tryon, Arizona State. Aaron Francisco, BYU. Antoine Mathieu, the real HU, the Mecca, Howard University. Jacob Lacey, Name for its high school. Mexican matching all season long, especially in that secondary, have been the Colts. Third down and nine. Sanchez's pass is caught, and then it's Cotchery who should have enough for the first down, and they'll spot the ball at the 49 yard line and move the chains. I tell you, there are a lot of great athletes on this Jets team, but Jericho Cotchery has more guts than any of them. He catches this thing about three yards shy of the first down marker and just refused to go down. And here's the key matchup we'll be watching all night long. <laughs> Sean Ferguson, a little knee to the side, and Damian Woody is coming back from a knee injury himself on the other side. Sanchez loves to spread the ball around. Cotchery caught 41 passes. And that was good for only fifth on the team in receptions. Sanchez rolling right, and then the pass is thrown to the sideline. Incomplete. Let's check in with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Well, Al, remember, Sanchez initially injured his right shoulder week 15 against the Steelers. Now he has a bruising of the capsule, which is the lining around the rotator cuff. There may be some cartilage damage, and he could require offseason surgery. Now the team doctor said the only increased risk of injury is if he's hit on it or falls on it. He's still sore. You can imagine how he feels after that sack. And guys, on the sideline between series, he's doing exercises with the resistance band to stay warm. All right, thank you, Andrew. Came in last night and he says absolutely no problem, but we'll see. Here's Green across the 50 yard line to the 49 yard line, setting up third down and long. You know, Al, one of the uh, real keys has been the improvement on this Colts defensive side of the ball, especially against the run. And there's number 91, Ricardo Matthews, and he's a big reason why. Last couple of weeks, he's gotten in the ball game, and he's a rookie just pushing the pile backwards, and it's made a difference in this run stuff. Colts a lot better running the ball and stopping the run over the last month, and they end the season with a four-game winning streak. Tomlinson is back in. Third and eight. And a quick throw, and that's behind Santonio Holmes. Fourth down, Jacob Lacey with the coverage on the play, and the Jets will punt. Well, that's a big play by Jacob Lacey. These outside cornerbacks for the Colts, the Jets anyway, feel like that they're really no match for these receivers. Just a poor throw that time. Lacey's a guy that sits on a lot of routes. They think they can get deep on him. Steve Weatherford came close to setting a record for most punts inside the 20 this year. And that one is into the end zone, so that is his second touchback. Two kicks tonight. 607 remaining in the quarter. No score in Indianapolis. We've closed Lucas Oil Stadium. We were talking about the Colts rushing. First 13 games, about 80 yards per game, and 149 last three defense. Same thing. And the yards per carry up to 5.1 over the last three. Final three. 3.0 nothing like a bar graph <laughs> back to the eighth grade I love it to describe it perfectly it's going to be a little interesting tonight though because the Colts offensively without their probably best offensive lineman Ryan Deem at the right tackle position and Jeff Lincolnbach is going to take over there as fireman Ed looks on first and ten from the 20 yard line Dominic Rhodes He's the running back, and here he goes. And Rhodes, who led the United Football League in rushing this season, picks up one. Let's take a look at the Jets' defense. 
Sean Ellis, Tennessee. Sean at Boha, University of Utah. Mike DeVito, University of Maine. Brian Thomas, UAB. Bart Scott, Southeastern Jungleers. Dave Harris, Ottawa Hills. Calvin Pace, Wake Forest. Darrell Rivas, Pitt. Dwight Lowry, Cabrillo College. Brandy Poole, Oklahoma. Antonio Cromartie, Florida State. And Manning, quick snap that there's a flag on the play after Rhodes carry. Here's the Gene Steratore's call. 12 men on the field defense. Five yard penalty. Replay second down. Exactly what Peyton was doing when he quick snapped it. Yeah, and what they're doing, as soon as they get a run stop on first down, they're trying to get their pass rushers on the field in second down. And of course, Peyton's never allowed a defense to do that. And because of it, Manning, instead of second and nine, has a second down and four. Five and a half to go in a scoreless first quarter. Inside handoff to Rhodes. Rhodes picked up, as they say, from the United League. It's his third stint here. Remember, it was Rhodes in 06 who was so good in postseason play, had a huge Super Bowl, very instrumental in the Colts' only Super Bowl championship since moving to Indianapolis. Third and one. Colts are 0 for 2 on third and short. Backs off. And throws, and it's incomplete. And the Jet defense has now stopped the Colts on three straight third and shorts. Intended for White, covered by Drew Coleman. Yeah, that's a good job by Drew Coleman. I'm surprised they didn't go with a little pick play of some kind with him playing so far off, but instead they just run the quick out. And Coleman playing the outside edge forced Peyton to try and make a little too perfect throw. And so far, this is like two boxers feeling each other out in the opening rounds. Colts have not moved the ball past their own 29-yard line. McAfee's third kick of the night, fielded by Cotterie at the 28-yard line, and he gets up to the 43-yard line. And Brad Smith a little shaken up as he hobbles toward the sideline for New York. I mentioned going to commercial Brad Smith was hobbling off the field we're going to take a look at what happened he, he is so vital to them in so many respects yeah he is right out here on the outside and Brad Smith's the special teams extraordinary he runs the Wildcat for this team it's a major force when you talk to the Colts they said how much practice time they use up against that and now it looks like he's grabbing his leg I won't try to guess we'll give you a report a little bit one reason the Jets have had such great field position this year is Smith who averages 29 yards per kickoff return so the Jets again have good field position the Colts haven't moved past their 30 and the Jets will try to take advantage of this now from the 42 yard line Sean Green is the back here goes Green when Green got hurt last year in the AFC Championship game, that made a big difference. He had a huge game at Cincinnati, had a big game in San Diego, had a spectacular postseason. But when he got hurt in the second half here, Indianapolis took the reins in a way they went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and what a postseason Sean had, uh, averaging over five and a half yards per carry. And there's no question, Mark Sanchez telling us last night that when he went out of that game, we had a lot of second and nines trying to run the ball on first down in the second half. Second down and six. Fake toss. Green slips to the outside. And some tough running takes him to the 50 yard line. Tryon and Francisco in on the stop. Third down and two to come. Well, they've got some young linebackers in the game for the Indianapolis Colts. Cavell Connor that time was flanked all the way out to the outside. But you can see these guys in here, they have some idea of where these things are going. But that time that the bounce out play just simply wasn't there. Tomlinson back in on third and two. Flanking Sanchez in the gun. It's 
Sanchez under pressure sends it for Holmes incomplete. That time it was Dwight Freeney who got to Sanchez as he released fourth down. That was just a poor pass by Mark Sanchez. Santonio Holmes with a brilliant release got in behind Cornelius Brown. This should have been a potential touchdown. You get one of the fastest players in the game. That's a pretty easy pitch and catch. And because of some of the pressure, Sanchez missed it. Weatherford, it's the sixth punt of the night between the two teams. White Fair catches it at the 13. Indy still looking for its first first down, and Freeney looked like he might have uh, hurt his shoulder a little bit right here. No score. Rex Ryan showing a lot of looks to Peyton Manning so far. They came out in the first series and had three uh, defensive linemen in the game, three linebackers, and then five defensive backs to match the three wide receiver look. Come out later and end up with just one down lineman and Jason Taylor inside with five linebackers and five defensive backs. But you can tell their priority is getting a first down run stop, and if they get that, then they try to substitute. Meanwhile, the Colts against that Jet defense, they run nine plays for 20 yards and no first downs. Manning stepping up, throws, Rhodes makes the catch, and there is their first first down. Coming with two and a half minutes to go in the quarter, Harris, the linebacker, making the tackle gain of 13. Now the Jets got a little fouled up on that one. I don't know exactly what happened, but everybody ends up going this way, and they just lose track of Dominic Rhodes, who picks up the first down. From the 25 yard line. Rhodes again. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Brian Thomas making the tackle. Loss of a couple. Second and 13. Well, there's one of the top cornerbacks in the game, Darrell Rivas, on the outside, and it's part of what's making this game so interesting. Matched up against Reggie Wayne for the most part tonight. And then on the uh, flip side, you've got. Uh, another great matchup with Pierre Garçon against Antonio Camardi. Second and 12. And pass to Garçon. And he slips by Cromarty and gets out to the 34 yard line. So Garçon gives Manning and company a third and short at the 34 yard line. Well, one of the things that the Colts wanted to do in this game was make Antonio Cromarty tackle. They felt like the more screens and the more runs his way, the bigger advantage they had because he's not a very physical player. We can remember days back when he was with San Diego actually passing up a tackle on Sean Green that became pretty famous. So he's one they're going to attack. Eric Foster is the fullback providing leverage for Rose and they pick up the first down. So the Colts have now had four third and ones and that's the first time they've converted. Boy, that was some hit that time by David Harris, even though it doesn't end up stopping the play, but he got right in the hole and give Dominic Rhodes some credit. He put his head down and somehow spun off of that one for a first down. At the 36, final minute of the opening quarter. with his fifth carry across the 35 yard line minimal gain Harris makes the tackle and that's going to take us to the end of the first quarter in this AFC wildcard playoff game end of the first quarter with the score the New York Jets nothing and the Indianapolis Colts nothing this wildcard playoff game will continue after these messages Victory Field, which is uh, across the street, International League Baseball, AAA, Indianapolis Indians. There's Ryan Dean, who we thought was going to play tonight, but he's out. Jeff Lincoln bought the rookie out of Cincinnati, takes his spot along the offensive front. They start the second quarter. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer. Indianapolis wild card game, no score. Second and ten. Rhodes with his sixth carry. 
Up to the 41 yard line Mike DeVito making the tackle for the Jets. I'll tell you the one thing you notice in watching the Jets defensive line is that they basically have three defensive linemen in there that can cover four gaps which is pretty unusual. They are big strong guys in there. Sione Bahua, Mike DeVito, Sean Ellis. These guys right here. That time though Dominic Rhodes after looking like he was going to be stuffed for no gain kind of powered his way through at least for a few. Third and six. Trips right. Only Wayne is to the left and Manning goes to the right side and that's Tammy and Tammy's going to come close to picking up a first down. So Tammy really coming into his own having playing on special teams. Dallas Clark such a big part of the Indy offense got hurt in October. Tammy used to making a lot of catches a wide out at Kentucky. No catches in the first six games this year. 67 from week eight on. From the 47 yard line. They want to die is back in the game now. And a two step, two and a half step drop, and the pass to Tammy will get close to a first down. They'll spot the ball at the 43, and they signal a first down for the Colts. Well, we talked about a little bit out. Here's a guy that had six career catches in two years before Dallas Clark got hurt this year and he has 67 since then in the last 10 games. I think it's a uh, kind of a matter if you get a chance to play with number 18 or not don't you. Oh yeah it, it helps a little. Six receivers this season with three touchdowns. In the Take to a die and the pass is thrown over the head of Garcon who was covered by Phil Marty who says not, not that time pal or something uh, similar reasonable. Yeah that's a good coverage on the outside that time you're going to see Crow Marty just run out. They had the safety that came in the middle of the field and Peyton saw the man on man coverage and just took his shot on the other side Reggie Wayne working against Rel Revis and I agree with Reggie Wayne you better work inside against Revis. He's tough to the outside. Second and ten. You know, one thing about that matchup with Revis and Wayne, Revis will go to the Pro Bowl, held out, hurt his hamstring, got off to a slow start this year. No interceptions because basically he gets most of the day off. You're not going to get the day off today. No. Really, they're going to throw it to Reggie Wayne. No interceptions and no penalties against Revis this season. Colts have picked up a couple of third downs in a row. And they've got a little longer situation. Third and eight. Manning throws and it's caught by Wayne, but it does no damage. Gets a yard or so to the 40 yard line, and uh, Manning will watch McAfee come in for his fourth punt of the night. Yeah, that time Revis was way off, but they ended up with Dwight Lowry running out underneath that. You're not going to get a free shot out to Reggie Wayne. You almost can assume if you see Darrell Revis that far off, help is on the way. McAfee to punt. Contrary is back to receive. Fair catch called for by Contrary at the 10 yard line. 11 28 left in the opening half. Gets nothing, Colts nothing. How about them Jets this season? They started off 9 and 2, got ripped in the New England and then wound up losing three of their last five and had a big win at Pittsburgh. Third fewest yards, six fewest points allowed. They were one and one in those categories last year. Look at that. Sanchez and Ryan making the playoffs in their first two seasons together. If you're a Jet fan, you probably know all too well. The last time they had a quarterback start at least 10 games in two straight seasons for the same coach, Ken O'Brien and Bruce Coslett in 90 and 91. There you go. Well, you know what's been strange, though, about this offense? They're either great or terrible. They have averaged 28 points a game in their 11 wins and just 10 in their five losses. And in one of those, they scored 34 points. 
Sanchez starting from the 10 yard line. And dumps it off underneath to Tomlinson. Labanian gets 13 up to the 23 where Favell Connor makes the tackle. They're going to end up with Robert Turner on the end of the line of scrimmage. One of the things the Jets wanted to do was to basically play additional tackles as tight ends in this game. A, you flank Freeney one step wider, and B, you don't have a tight end trying to double team the guy because that just doesn't work. Turner 23. Gain of one, maybe two for Tomlinson. Let's check in with Andrea. Well, Al, Brad Smith for the Jets has a left groin injury. They tried to stretch him out on the trainer's table a couple of times. They brought him in the locker room. He just ran out. He's on the bike. They are still calling his return questionable. And as we mentioned before, thank you, Andrea. They would really miss him returning kickoffs. Of course, he also gives you the, the added dimension on offense. Colts were saying we have to spend a whole day preparing for the Brad Smith package. Second and nine from the 24 yard line. Sanchez, who loves play action, makes it pay off. Caught first down, 49 yard line by Braylon Edwards, who came to the Jets last year in a trade with Cleveland. Boy, I tell you what, Mark Sanchez, I don't think his shoulder's hurting him anymore. Watch this throw. He loads up on this one. And Edwards goes up and makes a really nice catch in front of Aaron Francisco. But that's a little bit along the lines of what we saw by Mark Sanchez in the snow in Chicago. That was a heater. 24 yard gain. Sanchez five out of nine for 49 yards. Tomlinson across the 50 yard line. Pat Angerer 51. Rookie who's been uh, baptized by fire this year because of the injuries to Brackett and Session and the other linebackers. Rookie from Iowa, second round draft choice, has done a good job. Yeah, one of the things the Jets feel like they can do is run right at those young linebackers inside, Cabell Connor and Pat Anger. They don't want them using their speed running sideways. They want to try and play power football right at both of them. Second and seven. With the pressure closing in, the pass is incomplete. Play fake. Colts didn't buy it. And then coming in was Keonta Dawson and Cavell Connor Holt to knock Sanchez down. Now Cavell Connor is going to come right through here, and there's plenty of protection here for whatever reason. The Jets just missed that one. Over Mathis on the outside. And I tell you, Damian Woody's knee looks a little gimpy out there. Wouldn't be totally stunned to see Wayne Hunter. If he can't get off a little quicker than that. Woody has missed the last three games. Third and seven. Play clock at one. And they just do. Maybe they didn't get it off. No, they don't. They didn't get it off. Clock went to zero. Delay Fire of game. The snap. Delay of game. Offense. The Jets are using a lot of motions and shifts in this game in part because the Colts have two rookies playing linebacker. They think they might get a little confusion and take away some of their aggressiveness. Well, that time it went the other way for Brian Schottenheimer. 37 year old offensive coordinator son of Marty. Calling the plays. Let's see what he dials up on a third and 12. Pressure. Look out. And Sanchez with a backflip to Tomlinson. And he gets taken down at about the line of scrimmage. Dangerous. Tomlinson tackled by Brown. A little side of the hand backflip. Backhand. It looked like uh, Dwight Freeney initially is going to get this inside move going. And then it forced Sanchez to step around. And then it was just simply game on after that. And for Sanchez, not too many of those, please. Weatherford's kick. White's going to let it bounce. And that time he's got backspin on it. Can the Jets stop it from going into the end zone? This time they can. The officials checking with each other to make sure the ball did not go into the end zone. 
So they haven't made a call yet. You've got a. That was the unbelievable. Move, the move beanbag is down to indicate that's where the ball should be placed, and Steratore will let the guys figure it out. Marquise Cole is going to get his hands on this as long as he doesn't touch. Uh, he touched his hand on the end line, then flipped it back. Really It'll go to the 20. Is that a member of the kicking team was in the end zone when he touched the football? Therefore, the result is a touchback. First down, Indianapolis. Timeout. Just, just barely. Almost a tremendous play again, but it cost him 19 yards. If you go to NFL.com slash fantasy, you can sign up for the playoff challenge where you could win a trip to Super Bowl 46, which, by the way, will be played in this building. Can't wait. A little over a year from now. Colts will start the fourth drive. From the 20 yard line, the other drive started from the 13, and the pass is caught underneath by White. He's going to dive for a first down. Blair White out of Michigan State, free agent signee. Now one of the marquee matchups, Darrell Rivas against Reggie Wayne, and I think with all the other numbers, here's the key one right there. He has one yard of offense thus far in this one, so the matchups on the outside. So far, go to the Jets. And Rivas didn't mind that. It was third and long. Gave him the yard underneath. That's been it for Wayne. He goes a die to the outside and cuts it back nicely. Good run out to the 39 yard line. Got in behind the left tackle, Charlie Johnson, to set up a second and two. Yeah, just the old stretch play here by the Colts. You're just going to see everybody sort of moving this way and then allow the back to make the cut. That time they got. Pretty nice foot block on Jason Taylor. And the guy came off. A little gimpy. So Rhodes comes back in. Second and two. Dominic Rhodes close to a first down. I'm going to spot it just over the 40s, and that's going to make it third down and inches. Well, so far the Jets have been okay with not blitzing playing two deep safeties and essentially daring Peyton Manning to run the football. I remember having a conversation with him one time he said early in his career that would have made him absolutely crazy when he couldn't throw the ball. He says now if they're giving me that I'm going to stay with the run. And that runs counter to what the Jets normally do is they blitz as much as any team in the league. Third and one. And Rhodes playing for the Florida Tuskers not that long ago for a first down. Yeah. Have to line up with Foster in the backfield on plays third and short. Yeah, they're going to come right here with the big double team and just get enough movement. I tell you, Buha did a good job against Jeff Saturday. He got him pushed back in the backfield, but Saturday held on just long enough and wouldn't let him get free to make the tackle. 5.45 to go, no score. Quite in contrast to what we saw in the Seattle New Orleans game a few hours back. Manning, buying time, going deep, making the catch by Shaw. Touchdown, Colts. Seven yards on a first and ten. Sooner or later. Marson right out here on the end of the line of scrimmage. That was the first time really that they had brought a safety down, which left Pro Marty one-on-one, -on -one, and Brodney Poole just did not get there. Eric Smith came down to play the run. Peyton saw it all the way, knew he was going to have single high, and a horrible angle by Brodney Poole to allow that one in there. Adding Vinatieri to tack on the extra point. And finally a breakthrough at 5.25 to go in the opening half. The Colts, seven, and the Jets nothing. Here's a reminder, a half hour after tonight's game, live from New York, Saturday Night Live, Jim Carrey, posing from 30 Rock tonight. Saturday Night Live, 
on NBC. Well, Brad Smith still on the sideline. Manning just threw the touchdown pass to Garcon. So you've got Kyle Wilson, the rookie defensive back out of Boise State, who's going to run the kickback. And he's going to come out from five yards deep. And bring it back out to the 22 yard line. Sanchez will go to work with the Jets down by a touchdown. Garcon winning that matchup with Cromartie. Garcon got hot like the Colts at the end of the year. He had five touchdowns over the last five games. He was second in the league in on target drops. He didn't drop that one. He dropped that one on the Jets. 57 yards and a touchdown. First down for the Jets now from the 21 yard line. Toss to Tomlinson. Freeney chasing him. Gets one armed out of bounds by Francisco, and back we go to the touchdown. Well, one thing you know when the Colts get in this bunch formation, it forces Cromarty to go off. And then Brodney Poole here takes a bad angle coming back the other way. Yes, it's Cromarty's fault, but Brodney Poole has responsibility for the middle of the field, and he is at least half to blame, but not in Rex Ryan's mind. He's saying, Mr. Cromarty, we brought you here for one reason, to knock off the Colts, because this guy ate us up last year, 151 yards, and you didn't get it done. And 11 catches in that championship game. And this is Sean Green on a second and two. And that'll be a first down for New York. I'll tell you the other part about it for Cromarty, he really is a guy. If you let him play bump and run, he is very, very good. But when he starts playing off coverage, he gets high, he looks a bit confused. He's just not the same player. And I guarantee you the Colts saw the same thing that I did watching the tape. The more they get him to back away from the line of scrimmage, the more effective they're going to be. Sunday night game in 2007 in San Diego. Cromartie picked Manning three times in one game as Sanchez rolls to his right and the pass is incomplete. The coverage is good. Dustin Keller, the tight end, traveling downfield, covered by the safety Antoine Bethea. Second down. That was a good recovery that time by Antoine Bethea. He was looked like he might get hooked there. Keller coming across the field and Bethay was down around the line of scrimmage and when he saw that bootleg he turned and sprinted backwards. Got there just in time. Second and ten. Caught right flat Santonio Holmes. Over the 35 yard line he's covered there by Jacob Lacey. One of the things you have to contend with with the Colts is the fact that their corners know their pass rush is so good that they can squat on routes. And I think what the Jets are trying to do right now is throw some underneath balls to get Lacey jumping some of these routes and then they'll go double move by him like they did a season ago to Braylon Edwards for the 80 yard touchdown. Third and four. Justin Tryon the cornerback. Jets go three by one and the pass and Holmes reaches up makes the grab to convert takes the ball in the cold territory to the 48 yard line. Well now each receiver has taken a shot against Cornelius Brown the young cornerback the rookie free agent and they're just doing these little turn in routes. It takes a little courage if you're a wide receiver to go in there because you don't know exactly where the safety is but it appears there's a pretty good hole in there for them to continue with that shot. Under three to go. First half seven to nothing Colts. Green is the running back. There goes Sean Green for a nice game. Taking the ball to the 41 yard line setting up a second down. And three, Eric Foster making the tackle. We talked about how fast this Colts defense is. And one of the things the Jets want to do is use that speed against them. You're going to see a lot of these cutback kind of plays where they start the run one way and then bring it back against the grain. Remember the Jets, a much more physical offensive line on their right side with Brandon Moore and Damian Woody. That's where they want the ball to go. And the Jets will be content to let the clock run down to the two-minute warning. 
120 seconds remaining in the opening half in this wild card battle. Seven to nothing, Indianapolis. So at a halftime show coming up if you missed it. Well, you can't assume anything. We said that last week. Seattle beats New Orleans. If you haven't seen Marshawn Lynch's touchdown run, stay tuned. It was a beauty. Seattle winning 41 36. They advance. Saints will not win another Super Bowl crown, at least not this year. Seven to nothing, Indianapolis. Two minutes to go. Second and three. Sanchez avoids the sack for the moment. And then the pass is incomplete. Feeling Maola was in his face. Almost had the sack. Forced the pass. Third and three. Looking to go to San Antonio Holmes again here. A little that was the uh, the route that they love to run that sluggo route the slant and go up the field. But because the Jets haven't been effective enough running the football yet. The Colts have just stayed in that two deep safety and they had it covered. Jets have all of their timeouts. Third and three from the 41. They toss it to Tomlinson and Ladanian Tomlinson picks up the first down before he's forced out of bounds. Going around the left side to Brickashaw Ferguson helping to provide the escort first down to the 30 yard line. Now anytime you see a long run you know there's a wide receiver making a block comes right up here. And gets Aaron Francisco and is able to set this edge to Brickashaw Ferguson, such a good athlete out in open space, also able to lead the way. But LT looks good tonight, doesn't he? I mean, this is a guy that hasn't always had the best of luck in the playoffs, but he's starting to feel it. Six carries for 47, and carry number seven will only get a yard or two. He takes the ball to the 28 yard line. That's the only thing left on his resume, Chris, is a great postseason performance. He was hurt a lot. And San Diego's big games and San Diego dropped a lot of those games and clearly during the regular season his numbers are spectacular but in postseason we'll take a look right there. Second and eight. Keller was in motion Freeney came across the line. False start. Offense number 60. Five yard penalty. And that was Ferguson, the left tackle, on the move. Well, we saw the Jets in this game last year, as if in a little flinch, really struggle with the noise. But it wasn't that they were moving too quickly, they were moving too slowly last year. So in practice this week, they said the noise level was incredible. They were piping in a lot of music, they were piping in crowd noise, they were doing it at the same time, it was driving everybody nuts. But they felt like that was a major factor in the loss a season ago. So it'll be second down and 13. Gene Steratore trying to reset the game clock or the play clock. Nope, the, the game clock. Thank you. Which they do. He put one second back on it, 115. Well now because of that five yards you've got to assure the field goal first where you're already in pretty good range for a field goal before. Quick drop. Holmes makes the catch. Takes the ball to the 19 in the first down so he gets 14 on the second and 13 and Sanchez takes the Jets first timeout. So Chris yes. the Seattle Seahawks. You saw that one coming right like you saw you saw remember you saw you saw Minnesota coming when they beat Philadelphia you told me you saw that one coming right. I leave you one hanging curveball and it turns into a lifetime nightmare don't I. Well, it, it speaks to what the <laughs> NFL is I mean everybody says Seattle they stink. Well they're either going to Chicago or Philadelphia or they're going to Chicago or, or Atlanta you know next week. It sounds like Arizona a few years ago and you ended up calling that one in the Super Bowl right. right? Who would have believed that. And San Antonio Holmes who was one of the stars of the game in this one tonight. First and ten the ball is at the 19 yard line. And the pass is incomplete intended for Keller who looks for a flag covered by Bethay. Good ball handling that time by Sanchez but Bethay is staying right with the tight end. It's a bad throw you know I mean it, we're talking about the NFL these are throws you have to make they're going to fake the quick screen left then they're going to fake the draw inside. Keller is going to get behind Bethay. It's a touch pass. It's not easy. 
But they maybe get a little hold, but you've got to give your big tight end a chance. That's two balls now they've had chances on that they missed them both. Twelfth play of this drive. Over the middle, and that one's high again. And Keller says, what about a flag on that one? Nope. Third and ten. Well, Antoine Bethe is pushing the envelope, as we like to say. See if he gets a little grab. Really nothing too bad. I think that's a good no call right there. I wouldn't have called that one either. But again, if Sanchez just gives Keller a chance, he's a big target. Give him a shot. And it's like Aaron Francisco going off. Right. Another issue in that depleted Colts secondary. Ken Hamlin replaces him. And the Cowboy from the Seahawk. Third and ten. Sanchez. Ton of time with a two-man rush and nine back. Picked off at the goal line by Justin Tryon. Tryon cutting across the field. Tackled at the 23-yard line. And again, Sanchez, great protection. Only a two-man rush, nine back. Goes to Keller for a third consecutive time. And Tryon is there for the pick. Three terrible passes by Mark Sanchez. Here, Dustin Keller is going to pop wide open over the middle of the ball. Sanchez never sees him, tries to force it in. Again high for the third consecutive play. So no touchdown, no field goal, no nothing for Mark Sanchez. From the 23 now, Peyton Manning has two timeouts. In 45 seconds and two timeouts is an eternity for number 18. Instead, they give it to Rhodes. A little bit of a surprise there. He takes the ball up to the 28-yard line. And the Colts are playing this one as if they're going to be content with a 7 to nothing lead. But Manning will snap this one with 28 seconds. And, and then when Peyton senses he's going to get sacked, down he goes. He's not going to get jostled. He's not going to take the big hit. He'll just go down. Jim Caldwell says, yeah, yeah, you know. Like, I need you. I need you, friend. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's a smart play in this situation because the last thing you want to do is give up a sack fumble to Jason Taylor or Calvin Pace. And so Peyton Manning says, I'll take my 7 nothing, especially if Sanchez is going to throw that high all night. So it's 7 to nothing, Indianapolis at the half in this AFC wild card battle. And coming up next, it'll be the Toyota halftime show after these messages from your local. NBC station. Ain't no tomorrow. We gonna do this together. One, oh, three. One, two, three. One. This is our time. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Time to fly. Manning, buying time. Go. Touchdown Colts. Now Michaels, Chris Collins with Andrea Kramer. Seven to nothing. Our halftime score. Now first half analysis brought to you by Wendy's. That was pretty easy really, Al, wasn't it? Peyton yeah. Manning got one wide open receiver. Hit it for a big touchdown. Pierre Garcon and Mark Sanchez on the other end had a couple of opportunities and was high basically or overthrowing every single one of them and there we sit. And so Sanchez will go to work when we start the second half. Brad Smith the groin injury and Andrea will update it shortly but he came out after the first quarter McAfee is there. He's ready to kick off, and we're going to see as Smith is on the sideline, Cromarty to run back the kickoff. And McAfee with another good deep boot. Cromarty will come out from the four yard line. Straight up the middle, and Cromarty almost broke it. McAfee, the kicker, makes the tackle up at the 37 yard line, and we will go now to Andrea. 
Well, Al, walking off at halftime, Rex Ryan absolutely furious. Said, I'd like to complete a pass and not throw an interception in the end zone. Quote, we completely have screwed up the protections. He said Peyton Manning couldn't complete a pass against the pressure they're seeing. As for the long touchdown to Garcon, a blown coverage, he said, and he wouldn't even, even repeat what he said to Antonio Cromartie. As for Brad Smith, still questionable. He's been running on the sideline, but Rex Ryan called him irreplaceable. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, you could look read uh, what he was saying to Cromartie. Sean Green starts as the running back from the 37-yard line. Green. So the Jets shut out in the first half. The Jets this season, they're in their five losses, in four of those five, they did not score a touchdown. Yeah, well, good news is Aaron Francisco is back in, but if he's going to come down there and play with the big guys, he's going to have to be able to handle blocks, and that's not going to work that often. There's looking like the Jets getting back to what they did a season ago in the first half of this game just pound Sean Green at these Colts and make them tackle make them be physical second down and five and they send Green through the middle to the 45 third and two when they line up next the numbers through the first half of play Jets better than two to one on the ground the Colts of course with 57 of those 116 passing yards coming on the touchdown to Garcon. And the one jet turnover came at the end of the half on the interception by Tryon. Jets now line up three receivers to the right. They go three by zero here on third and two. And go to Green. So they line everybody up to the right and then the run goes to the left and it's a first down of the 49 of Indianapolis. Now uh, here's the best way in the world to get your young quarterback settled. Just start running the ball. The Colts come with a slot blitz this time but now they're letting those big offensive linemen do what they do. They're just going to come off the ball and start pushing around a little bit a speed defense. That was the game plan coming in and somehow it just didn't work in the first half. Nice block by the right guard Brandon Moore doesn't get a lot of acclaim with Ferguson and Mangold. The stars up front and that pass is too high again. That's intended for the tight end Mulligan first time they've gone his way back up tight end second and ten. You know I don't know exactly what it is. I have heard quarterbacks talk a lot about sometimes when they overstride their elbow ends up sort of ducking underneath and the ball can fly. You can see the big stride that time by Mark Sanchez. Maybe if they can get him to shorten up a little bit might be able to get the ball under control because right now he is wild. He's nine out of 20 for 84 yards. Green. Good hole. To the cold 43 yard line. It'll be third down and three. Got him behind Tony Richardson. So using a little bit more of the veteran fullback in his 16th season, Tony Richardson, providing the leverage. Yeah, he did a nice job against Cavell Connor on that one. But now it's Jets football is going to get back to what they're used to. Here's a third and three. Remember Sanchez, one of his strengths is his mobility. And goes shotgun. See if they try to move him around a bit. Shotgun with Tomlinson in the backfield with him. And over the middle, that is caught. Keller on the run. And Keller takes the ball to the 23-yard line. On a third down and three, they get 20. Well, so far, the protection has been much better in this half as well. DeBrickashaw athletically matching up pretty well with Dwight Freeney on the outside, who's battling that ankle now. And but they just couldn't match up with Keller inside. Just got rebound position. Sanchez saw it, made a calm throw. That was one of his best. Tomlinson. So they exploit that middle again. But they makes the tackle with the change when we move first down at the 13. Well, Matt Slauson found something he likes to do on this one. Going to come across and get a nice trap block right here. And this one pops beautifully. LT said, look out, baby. Here we come. That's fun when you're running back and you see one pop like that. This offensive line's taking over right now. Jets have run for 105 yards. 
Give it to Green. And Green with a good run to the four yard line. Keeps the legs churning, setting up a second down and two after a gain of eight. Now they're going right to their two power guys. Brandon Moore, Nick Mangold coming off on the double team right here and just go right in behind it. Take that big back, Sean Green, and just let him break a couple of arm tackles. That time Angerer had a shot at him and just couldn't get him on the ground. Second and two. Eight plays on this drive. Six of them runs. Tomlinson. That'll be a first down at the one yard line. Seven runs, two passes on a drive that began at their own 37 yard line. Yeah, I always say, Al, if it works once, why not try that baby one more time? You get the trap one more time. One of the great running backs in the history of the game going inside. And this finally looks like the Jets. I bet you Rex ripped into him at halftime. No doubt. First and goal at the one. Tomlinson behind Richardson. LT trying to get in. He does. Touchdown. The New York Jets take the opening kickoff of the second half. They go 63 yards, eight rushes, two passes. Where Cavell Connor dives over the top of this thing and nearly makes the play. The Jets offensive line essentially had the Colts push back in the end zone, but watch Cavell Connor come over and catch LT right in the middle of the backfield. And somehow he still fought his way in. Nick Folk comes in to Try to tie the game. Steve Weatherford to hold it. Tanner Purdom to snap it. And we are even. 9.48 remaining third quarter. 7-7. Wildcard action tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern on CBS. Baltimore, Kansas City, then Fox will have the Packers and the Eagles from Philadelphia at 4.30 Eastern time, and that will be wrapping up Wild Card weekend. Already wild with Seattle eliminating New Orleans. And who goes on from this one? The Jets trying to win a trip to New England. Indianapolis trying to win a trip to Pittsburgh. Weatherford kicking off. Rhodes from the one. Dominique Rhodes gets spun down up at the 25 yard line by Jamal Westerman. So Manning finally gets the ball in the second half. Well, there's the key matchup so far in the ball game. Pierre Garçon going against Antonio Cromartie. And basically, Cromartie's done pretty well when he's been able to be on the line of scrimmage. Garçon's made a few plays here and there, but you can see that's really the strength of his game. But when he gets forced back off the ball like this, he just tends to get high and give up big plays. Now, he didn't get any help from Rodney Poole on that one either. But that matchup has really been the one because Drell Rivas on the other side's done a great job against Reggie Wayne. With a crescent moon. On the side of the panel, you can see the matchup tonight. First down from the 26 yard line. Joseph Adai, who played about uh, a quarter of the time in the first half because Rhodes did most of the heavy lifting. Get stopped uh, at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and that is also part of the story now with the way the Jets ran the football. They are up to 117 yards rushing on the game. The Colts just 31. And really, unless the Colts can establish something running the ball, it's going to be impossible to get the Jets out of this too deep safety look and get any more big plays. Brad Smith still trying to stay, stay loose. Got hurt on special teams in the first half and has him back second down and 11. Time sliding left, White makes the catch, and Blair White up to the 49 yard line. A walk on at Michigan State, a free agent, a couple of surgeries, and he's had his chances to shine this year with all of the injuries to the Whiteouts. 23 yards. Right here, going against Drew Coleman, who struggled in this game a year ago. And if you give Peyton Manning that much time to throw the football, he's going to eat you up. They need a pass rush right now. It's been an issue for the Jets this season, even though their defense is 
third in the league in James Territory's crew. Signals a false start against the Colts. False start. Offense, number 84. Five yard penalty. First down. Tight end, Jacob Tammy. Jim Caldwell, again, Tony Dungy retiring. Caldwell had been on the staff. Caldwell had a lot of head coaching experience. For eight years, he was the head coach at Wake Forest. Before that, he was an assistant at Penn State under Joe Paterno. He's got a great pedigree. Paterno, Dungy, and a head coach at Wake. A dive up to the 49. You know, when you talk about contrasting coaches, I mean, Rex Ryan, of course, is the, the all time sound by headline maker. And then there's Caldwell. But he can have some fire and brimstone, too, because he said in his family at one time, there were 17 ministers. <laughs> so he can sermonize as well as anybody. Doesn't everybody have that? <laughs> right. <laughs> Only on Thanksgiving, I think. Right. He's a good man, though. He really is. He's well respected on this football team. Second and nine. From the 49. And Manning's pass is incomplete. Coverage very good on Tammy. That's on draping him was the safety Eric Smith. Well, Eric Smith back in the lineup after missing three weeks with a concussion, and that's big. They're already without Jim Leonard, who was really the quarterback of this defense. On the other side, Reggie Wayne. Working against Revis actually got him beat back inside and ended up having to cut out where he, he left Revis. Third and nine. And they run it with a die on a third and nine. Great pull to the 37 yard line. Tackled there by Smith. Somehow he knew Jason Taylor was abandoning that side going the other way and he hit it perfectly. From the 37. A dive, chugging through the middle, gets down to the 32 yard line. Well, the one thing that Rex Ryan talked about was we're going to have to be patient. I'm going to allow some running yards. If we can take the ball out of Peyton Manning's hands, that's all good for us. He said there's really no difference between Peyton and Curtis Painter, the backup, when he's handing off. <laughs> That's the only thing they do <laughs> similarly. Second and five. He gets it to Tammy, and Tammy will be stopped short of the first down. That's the safety Smith on the tight end, setting up a third and one at the 28 yard line. You know, that's really the first blitz I've seen so far out of the Jets tonight. They're starting to get a little bit itchy now. They don't like it when you start moving the football against them. See if they start coming back. They've been very patient today. Third and one, Colts have had problems on third and short tonight, two out of five. Give it to Rhodes. Stopped at the 28 yard line. No gain. So that's four times in six opportunities that the Jet defense has stopped the Colts on a third down and one. And they'll bring in Vinatieri to try to give them the lead. What a play by Mike DeVito. He takes Jeff Saturday about four yards in the backfield and sets that thing up for David Harris. That was spectacular when they needed it most. Great play. One of the great clutch kickers of all time, especially in postseason. Adam Vinatieri, 47 yarder. McAfee to hold it. And Vinatieri is good. From 47, Indy back on top by three. Third quarter. Brad Smith is back. Hurt his groin on a special teams play in the first half. We've had a couple of others returning kicks and now Smith is, is going to come out 
from about seven yards deep, but not very far. So Smith gets back into action, and Cornelius Brown is able to make the tackle at the 13-yard line with 449 remaining in the third quarter on Wild Card Saturday. And seven points. Yeah, it was the big doggies that took over on the last drive for the New York Jets. Art Sanchez struggling, and so they just started pounding the football with Sean Green and LaDainian Tomlinson. Big trap right there inside. But when the Jets' offensive line gets moving forward like this, it sets up everything else they do well, the bootlegs, the play action. You know the Colts are sitting there anticipating a run call here. Will Schottenheimer come with something unexpected? Jets, 5.6 yards per tote on the ground behind the big uglies from the 13-yard line. Tomlinson to the 17. Closer look at these guys. You had Ferguson drafted in the first round in 06. He's been to a couple of Pro Bowls. Slauson's only 24. Mangold went in that same first round with Ferguson. A pair of stars there. Moore is a guy who Ryan said should be in the Pro Bowl, and Woody's been around a long time, 12 years. And Damian Woody's been holding up pretty well on the outside. Mathis has had a couple of run stops, but no big play sacking the quarterback. And Sanchez gets it away before the bookends close in on him. Keller makes the catch, but they makes the tackle. Chains move, first down. Well, you've got to go after the inexperience on the Colts' defense, and now the Jets starting to do it. Right there is uh, Pat Anger, just in coverage. You've got probably Sanchez's favorite weapon and Dustin Keller. Just get it to him. Start moving. Get a little work going. Richardson lines up as the fullback in front of Tomlinson. And they send LT to the right side this time for a nice game. 36 yard line. Broke out of a would be tackle by Gary Brackett. Now they're going right at the rookie again. And Ben Hartsock's going to come out here and get the block on Anger. Good block on the outside, too. I tell you, Braylon Edwards doesn't get enough credit for the blocking that he does on the on the edge. Consistently in these games, he's getting blocks. And you see they're attacking right downhill to these young linebackers on the Colts now. Under three to play in the third. Fast moving third quarter. On second and two, the play fake, and then Edwards makes the catch. And he gets tackled by Lacey from behind first down. We check in with Andrea again. Well, Al, it's bad enough that the Colts have 10 defensive backs on injured reserve already. Safety Aaron Francisco has a quad injury, and they are calling his return questionable. Tell you what, Andrea, through the season, the guys coming in and out of that Colt training facility needed name tags. Yeah, and they may need one here. Ken Hamlin is... He was cut by the Ravens earlier this year, just signed recently. Their fourth safety at that position. That has been a devastated position. Grant Smith takes the snap. So Smith across the 50, and Smith gets it to the 46-yard line. So Smith out for about a, a quarter and a half, and now back in and gains eight. Angler makes the tackle. Now this is a play that is just so tough. You end up reading these guys out here, and when they crash down inside, it's just an easy read by Brad Smith. He is so good. You see him looking right down the line of scrimmage, and that time as Mathis just read the block and went inside, it was too easy. Second and a deuce. Green is the running back. Here's Sean Green. And he's going to pick up the first down as they're going to spot him at the 43-yard line. He's tackled there by Bethay, first and 10 at the 43. You know, this defensive line for the Colts, they're not big. And so they have to rely on a lot of movement up front. You'll see this time Robert Mathis tries to jump down inside. And when he does, it ends up with two big offensive linemen and a fullback on a corner and a linebacker win for the Jets. Jets have rushed for 140 yards.
Green. And that's Angrew. All right, so now the Colts finally make a run stop. Nice play by Angrew. Let's see if they crank up this pass rush. Not a big blitz team, but now for Mathis and Freeney, their opportunity. Anger and knocking down his Iowa teammate, Sean Green. Second down and 12. Chance goes to the outside. That'll oh. be caught, and then a hard sock is tackled at the 40 yard line. It'll be third down and seven when we start the fourth quarter. End of three in Indianapolis. Colts 10, Jets 7. And this wildcard playoff game continues after these messages. Aerial coverage from the capital of Indiana brought to you tonight by the DVD dinner for schmucks. <laughs> you sell that so well, I might go buy it. I'm buying it. <laughs> well, I tell you, Ken Hamlin's only been here for a couple of weeks. I don't think he can know much more than the base coverages out here. So if you know that as a quarterback, got to believe you're going to see basic zones. Start working Dustin Keller over the middle. Fourth quarter in Indy. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer, a big third and seven from the 39-yard line. Crowd in full throat. Three-man rush. Sanchez a little dump off shovel pass. Tomlinson first down to the 30-yard line. Goes Ladani and Tomlinson, and the Jets keep the ball five minutes into the drive. Well, if there was any question in my mind to Brickashaw Ferguson, could he hold up to Dwight Freeney's bull rush? And he did a nice job there. He's a much more athletic tackle, and then the tail end of it just somehow <laughs> get the ball to LT. And he found a way to convert that one. This is a big drive for the Jets. Wildcat here, Smith. This will be the tenth play of the drive. They've had the ball for five and a half minutes. Unbalanced line to the left. Move their tackle over. And you got Green and Tomlinson both in there. They run the option to Tomlinson, and Bethay will force him out of bounds. They've run that with a lot of success this season. This time it's a, a minimal game. Called it three, second, and seven. Well, here's the unbalance. They're going to move Damian Woody over here. But I tell you, the tough part about this option is you basically leave one guy unblocked. Now you've got two guys coming at him, and if not for Antoine Bethea, who's played a really nice game so far today, that one would have had a chance. Second and seven. Conventionally now, Green. 21, you know, Chris, the way they lined up on that play with Tomlinson and Green in there and Smith in the Wildcat, is that the kind of thing that comes to an offensive coordinator at 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would say. There's Brian Schottenheimer. Check out the center here, Nick Mangold. I mean, this is nine guys down for the Colts right now, Al. They have just abandoned playing the pass. Everybody up to stop the run. Who's the bigger man at this point? The running back is Green. They fake it to him. Boot right. Sanchez is going to get the first down as he steps out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Secondary did its job, but Sanchez nimble, quick. To the outside he goes, first down. Well, Sanchez was tempted. Keller kind of popped his way out, but look at all the bodies in here. This is just man on man, and what a great call by Brian Schottenheimer to come with a bootleg. Maybe you flip that over the top. Maybe you convert it. There's no way in the world you take a chance on not converting that one. Good decision by Sanchez. Jets four for four on third down here. Now you've got Smith again with Tomlinson and Green. This time to the left. And this time it is Green. Every team that plays Peyton Manning wants to keep the ball away from him, and that's exactly what the Jets are doing here in the second half. Manning's only had the ball once. This is a seven and a half minute drive. Yeah, and he's over there, and Brad Smith's playing quarterback, and they're running the option, and what the heck's football coming to now? But eventually, Mark Sanchez is going to have to hit a big pass. Down in the red zone, this has not been a good area for Mark Sanchez. It's the toughest part of the game in the NFL. Second and nine. They send Richardson wide left. 
Holmes to the right. He looks towards San Antonio, then goes over the middle. It's Keller. He'll have a first and goal for them at the two-yard line. Well, we talked about it a little bit earlier because of the fact that they've got to play base coverages with Ken Hamlin in there. And Mark Sanchez did a good job. He wanted to go off to his right, came back, knew exactly where the check down was, and there was Keller over the middle. I think that's going to be the pass. If I were talking to Mark Sanchez on the sideline, I would say just keep finding Keller over the middle. It is there. Well spotted, three-yard line. Green is the running back. Sean Green to the outside, and Green cannot angle his way into the end zone. He is stopped at the one-yard line. Second down and goal with 11 minutes to go in regulation and this drive will now consume more than nine minutes before the next snap. And you know for Peyton who's had his share of frustrations in the playoffs over the years. This is killing him watching them methodically go down the field in this manner. Tomlinson is the running back trying to culminate what would be an 87 yard drive and Tomlinson is going to be stopped short of the goal line third and goal Hamlin comes up how about city. that Brandon Moore was coming out to try and kick out Hamlin on the play but I guess he knows a little something about goal line defense that was some play getting away from Moore and making that stop that one could be huge if they could get one more stop 17th play of the drive. Right here on third and goal. Tomlinson, touchdown. 17 plays, 87 yards, and six seconds shy of 10 minutes the Jets held the ball. Well, this is just outstanding on the right out here Robert Turner is going to come out and just inside him Damian Woody's going to get the reach block and then Turner got a big chunk of Pat Anger and LT that was a walk in and Gary Brackett blitzed inside there was no flow at all Nick Folk and 50 minutes into the game the Jets have their first lead of the night as they try to win a trip to Foxborough New York 14 Indianapolis 10. Want to bet on that horse in the Derby? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's great. The Indiana Derby. Fall kicking off. Rhodes from the goal line. Oh, coverage and a smackdown at the 19 yard line. By Emmanuel Cook. And Indy has the ball falling the second time in the half when we come back. Well, if the Jets end up winning this game, Darrell Revis is going to get the good chunk of the credit because so far Reggie Wayne with one catch for one yard and a totally meaningless play he's been physical at the line of scrimmage he's given Reggie Wayne no room to work whatsoever you could say Peyton Manning should look for him more there's been nowhere to look thus far in this one there's the matchup Wayne would rather vacation at Guantanamo than Revis Island <laughs> at least at this point 19 yard line first down Joseph Adai starts in this set. There's Adai through the middle. He goes. And the Colts will have a second and short up at the 28-yard line. Well, now the Jets getting a little more brazen with the fact that they are really daring the Colts to stay with that running game now. Just six guys down, defensive backs all over the field, two deep safeties. Run it, Peyton. Run it, baby. Second and one. It's a first down for Joseph Adai. He takes the ball out to the 34 yard line. Adai and Rhodes have split the carries tonight, each with 10 carries. Now, Peyton just wanted to get this first down, but that was a rare opportunity where he had a single safety in the middle of the field and man coverage everywhere. 
On second and short, more often than not, Peyton will take a shot down the field, but I think he felt like he had to at least get one first down out of this thing. With under nine minutes to play. Inside play fake, Manning with a ton of time, and then Garcon has to reach out and makes the catch. Pulls it in before he's out of bounds at the 47-yard line. First down. Well, Peyton wanted to go to Reggie Wayne on that one. Couldn't find anything on that side of the field and ends up flipping back and working against the guy that he's had success against for Pierre Garcon. That's another great catch. Garcon with his fourth under, catch tonight. Under, 91 under, yards and the only Indy touchdown. Eight and a half to go. Here goes a dive. To the 50-yard line goes Joseph Adaisman. More effective than Rhodes. 11 carries. 53 yards for a die. Rhodes, 10 carries tonight, 18 yards. Yeah, and Peyton is going to make Eric Smith, who's down in the box now, playing essentially a linebacker position. He's a safety, going to make him tackle. He immediately check to a run that side. If they're going to let Eric Smith play the linebacker position, they're going after him. There he is again inside. Fake and it goes back to a die and Smith is all over him. Third down and seven. Pretty good linebacker reaction that time by Eric Smith. He's going to see this as a play fake. They're going to try and run right up there at him and he doesn't buy into it. And he's all over Joseph a die. Beautifully done. Third and seven with Rhodes in the backfield. Three guys deep for the Jets on this one. Give it to Rhodes. They run it on third and seven to get the first down. To the 42-yard line. Just weren't enough guys inside. You can see they got three guys back here deep. And look, only five down in the box and one overshifted to the right. Peyton again showing his patience. How many times in his career in a moment like this would he have checked to a run on third and seven? After resetting Rhodes from his left to his right. Seven minutes to go, going deep for Garcon. It gets spun around. The pass is incomplete. Crowd wants a flag. There is none. Covered by Cromarty. Here Garcon working the inside release here. Had an opportunity. Makes a late move, absolutely no foul. The crowd's begging for anything at this point, but that's nothing. On second and ten now. Give it to Rhodes, and that's a good play. Stuffing him before he can get started is Trevor Price in his 14th season out of Clemson. Yeah, and basically Rex Ryan telling us that they've been holding Trevor Price, had a bit of a hip injury, but they thought he was the one guy one-on-one. -on -one. The Colts had no way to block. Third and eight. And he throws Garcon a slant. From already chasing him. Finally knocks him down at the 18-yard line. On a third and eight, Garcon comes up big again. I'll tell you, when Cromarty gets off, he is just not effective. He just runs out here. I don't think he had the typical bump and run kind of coverage that he had. That is not his game. I would do that very little, and any time he played off, I'd go after him. Triple figure night for Garcon, receiving yardage, 21 yard gain there. Off the fake, over the middle, and what a collision there. Whoa. Tammy. Tammy, the ball, and Eric Smith all getting there together. Well, you got to let these guys play defense a little bit. I thought Eric Smith got there right at the same moment. Let's look. I think that's a good no call. I'm going to agree with the officials. Boy, that's close. He has every right to go for the ball. He was on a clear path to the football. He has that right. Second and ten. Backing off. Let's 
see if he tries Garcon. To the ground. Rhodes for about three. And a huge third and seven coming up with 545 and ticking down. I tell you, typically this is a blitz down for Rex Ryan, but we haven't seen much of it tonight. So, I, you know, I've got to believe he's going to back off of this thing. Garcon's been the hot hand, though. Third and seven. Two safeties deep, plenty of room underneath. And they're gonna run it with Rhodes, and no, he gets tackled by Bart Scott. First time I think we've called his name in a while tonight. Safeties were deep, it's fourth down, and Vinatieri will come in to try to make it a one-point game. Well, Brodney Poole all the way back here is gonna end up coming up after Bart Scott makes the initial hit. It is Brodney Poole who I think has just been fantastic in this game. He has been coming up relentlessly tonight and play after play making big plays. And he started early, two big plays on third and one in the first quarter. Vinatieri with a 32-yard field goal attempt. And that makes it 14-13 Jets with 4.37 left in regulation. Well, Cromartie is back to return the kick. Smith, of course, is their main guy. Then he was out for about a quarter and a half, came back in, ran a couple of Wildcat plays, and now they go back to Cromartie. Who went, as a charger ran a kick back 109 yards, and that just does work its way into the end zone to save the Colts 20 yards of field position. Sanchez back to work, four and a half to go. Jets by one. That tells the story. 20 runs and seven passes in this half. And the Jets have done the job on the ground. They chewed up a lot of the clock. We're down to 437. They have the ball at the 20 yard line. Jets by one. Green is the running back. Green. Rex Ryan said to us last night, you know, in a perfect world, Tomlinson and Green would each carry the ball 20 times, and he laughed. Well, tonight he may get his wish. Tomlinson 15, Green 17. Well, this is just one of those moments for an offensive line. You can make a name for yourself. It'll be remembered for a long time. They have been cramming it down the throats of the Colts. Can they do it for just a couple more first downs and win this game? Second and seven. Clock under four. Green to the 25. And now a very big play for this Colts defense so they can avoid using their timeouts. Third and five. You end up with all the big defensive linemen on that side and linebackers over here. So that's the reason you're seeing the Jets work to that side. But now they're going to have to put the ball more than likely in the hands of Mark Sanchez, who has been high all night in this half the Jets five for five on third down third and five and they blitz and the pass is juggled and incomplete huge play Holmes couldn't hold on would have had the first would have compelled the Colts to use their timeouts instead Manning gets the ball back with three timeouts and a two minute warning. Oh it looked like the Super Bowl play Al. Little <laughs> out route easy catch a little high but definitely catchable no way that one's on Sanchez. Wow. Steve Weatherford to punt. Oh and his contact Weatherford goes down in the flat. A flag, a fair catch at the 29-yard line. Tate Smith, number 10, came in and made contact with Weatherford. And Steratore now will come up. It was fourth down and five. If it's running into the kicker, that's still going to be enough for a first. Running into the kicker, number 10 of the defense, five-yard penalty results, and a first down. It was fourth and five, but it was about four and 15 sixteenths, and that is gigantic. Oh, my goodness. 
blocked into a little bit. He hits him in the back. There was definitely a little push that propelled him. But Smith just continued to go at him when he just had no chance. I mean, there was no way he could have blocked that kick from where he was. Wow. Ty Smith, a free agent out of Syracuse. They signed him on November 10th. And that's given the Jets the ball back with 3.02 left in the fourth. Green cuts it back, gets tackled. And now Indianapolis is going to have to start using its timeouts. They do here. They have two left. 257, second and eight when we come back. 14 13, New York. Taj Smith, the guy who's been on the Colts practice squad for the better part of the last two years, got activated when Austin Collie went on IR. And right now, that is the play. They're running into the kicker call. And all he can hope for right now is that that defense can stop him. And Manning will get the ball back in a, in a one point game. Meanwhile, you got Smith coming back into the game. So he's been in and out after the groin pull. Tomlinson and Green both in the backfield with him. Cotterly sets up in the slot on second and eight. Run the option. Smith. Taken down third and five by Lacey. Third down and five, and the Colts will use their second timeout. Well, that ends up one that uh, because they have the extra guys in the box, there's really nowhere to go. You're going to end up with two guys, somebody to play the quarterback and somebody to play the pitch man. Would have much rather handed that ball to Sean Green. It's a rare misread by Brad Smith. Should have handed that thing off. There was space to the left. Jacob Lacey didn't move. That was the read. And here you go with Sanchez back in. And here we go again. There's Rex. What's the lesser of two evils? Do you trust Mark Sanchez or do you run it and punt it to Peyton Manning? I think you've got to throw the football here. Yep. Third and five with 251. Edwards right, Holmes goes to the left. Tomlinson in the backfield. With Green. Let's look. Sanchez is going to air it out, and it's too far. Intended for Edwards. They go for the goal on third and five, and Lacey with the coverage. Fourth down. Wow. Third and five blitz. They're going after Lacey, who they got for the 80 yarder last time. And once again, Mark Sanchez just overthrows it. There's no reason. You don't even worry about an interception there if you underthrow that thing. Weatherford, and this time they don't come close to touching him. White's going to get backed up, and that kick will bound its way into the end zone. 2.36 left. Manning has one timeout plus the two minute warning. Repulse of tonight's game. Sanchez, there are his numbers. Manning for 184 yards and that one touchdown to Garcon. Garcon's had a big night. Reggie Wayne has been a non factor. The Jets rushing huge. 93 second half yards. But here goes Manning in a one point game. Starts in the gun with a die at his side. I wonder if he's thinking about Tracy Porter at all. No, I hope. I don't think so. And the pass is caught on the outside, and that's Tammy to the 35, and a quick first down for the Colts. Well, because the Jets want to play those two deep safeties, they're going to get inside matchup one on one with Eric Smith against Jacob Tammy. It's a good spot. This time Blair White in the slot. Four man rush. Tammy juggles it but holds on and has a first down as he crosses the 45. Covered by Dwight Lowry. 
Again, no pass rush at all by the Jets. Manning. Here comes the blitz. Getting the play off before the two-minute warning. They give it to a guy. And a guy will take the ball in the 48. And that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Colts with one timeout and one of the greatest clutch kickers in the history of the National Football League. As they look ahead to a potential impossible game winning field goal. Two minutes to go. 14 13 Jets. Adam Vinatieri, four for four, league changing field goals. Last two minutes are overtime. Most in the history of the league, and who can forget it? so many kicks. Winning the Super Bowl against Carolina when he was with New England, but the kick against the Raiders in the snow was off the charts. 26 of 28 coming into this one tonight. He's been good tonight, too. From 47 and 32, he was two for two. Second and four, Colts have one timeout. That means the offensive line has Harris. Manning over the middle. And that'll be caught at the 37, and that's Blair White. First down, spot the ball at the 36. Manning with one time out and 145. He might as well have a month. Here's a dive. The dive of the 34. Just can't help but think. Rex Ryan saying how personal it was to finally get a win against Peyton Manning and here he is again taking his team down the field already in field goal range second and eight what's coming Johnny Falcons. Johnny Falcons. see if they check out defensively white it's a nice little pick but that's a good tackle by oh. Bart Scott with the ball to the 33 yard line. What a clutch play by Bart Scott. He yeah. was down inside and in a blitz look and he had to bail and get out of there in order to get out and make this play. The blitz inside means no inside pursuit whatsoever. And it was just a one on one out there. Bart Scott got off of his block and made a huge play. Indianapolis takes its final timeout. So it's third and six if they don't gain uh, excuse me, the Jets took that timeout. The Jets take a timeout. That's an interesting call by New York. It's almost as if they're saying we have to conserve our timeouts here because they're in Vinatieri's field goal range. Well, they're going to end up here with a kick that's going to be right around 50. So far for Vinatieri, as long this year was 48. He hasn't made one over 50 since 08. Third down and six. Time Bart Scott's the responsibility of the offensive line. Jets come. Manning rolls, throws, and at the 19, it's incomplete. Blair White was the intended receiver, and now here comes Vinatieri to try to add to his legacy. Fourth down, the kick's going to come from close to 50 yards out. Justin Snow will snap it. Pat McAfee will hold it. It's dead center between the hash marks. It's 50 yards under perfect conditions. Adam Vinatieri. What else is new? think there's any doubt anymore the Hall of Fame awaits this guy amazing you think back to the, the game against the Raiders you think back to the games in the snow you think back to the Super Bowls who in the world would you rather have with that kick than that guy right there what a year he's had only one other pure kicker in the Hall of Fame. That would be Jan Stenerud. Of course, Luke Rose is in. George Blanda is also in for their exploits in addition to kicking. 
But here is Ryan now with the field goal that could win the game for the Jets. Jets have two timeouts, so it's going to be up to that Colt defense. And Rex contemplated whether he was going to call a timeout or not. Doesn't, and obviously that's the right call. You can't afford to waste the timeout. I think he was playing a little mind game with Benetieri. Right. Just wanted to make him think maybe I'm going to call one, but there's no way he really was. Cannot waste the timeout in that situation. McAfee kicking off. Here's Cromarty. Cromarty out past the 30, and then Smith able to finally knock him out along with the kicker, but a great run back to set the Jets up near midfield. I tell you what, Cromarty looks really good returning these kicks. I think he got a little chewing out at halftime, and obviously in the first half, too. This guy can fly, though, and he has created a couple of good field positions for the New York Jets, who is the best in the league at creating field position for their offense off of kickoff returns. From already a great return man, holds the NFL record longest play in the history of the league, 109 yards. That can't be eclipsed, only tied. A run back for San Diego against the Vikings. From the 46 now, with 45 ticks on the clock. Sancho starts by hitting Edwards, and he gets taken down at the 45-yard line. The Colts are going to say that he didn't hang on to the ball. The officials say, oh, yes, he did. They spotted at the 44. No challenges here. Well, the ball, it's all booth review. The ball did come out, but did he have possession of it, fumble it, and then recover the fumble? I think that's going to be the ruling more than anything else. Looked like he caught it. Got hit a second time and then recovered his own fumble. One step, kind of put it away. The previous play is being reviewed. I don't think there's any question that's a catch. We don't see anything that would overturn that, even though the ball was loose. Never went to the ground. It should be upheld. It's all about a booth review right now. Sterator will come over and check it out and if it stands it'll be second down and one yeah count the steps one two tuck it away tackled then the ball comes out I won't be stunned <laughs> if they overturn it but I'll be surprised I think that's a catch now the Jets called a timeout Prior to the booth review. And they, they, they don't get the timeout back. You know, it, that's one of those situations where you have to save some time. Well, they don't want it reviewed anyway, is what it amounts to. And it's one of those things where you know, you're kind of in a position where if you don't want to review it, you want to hurry up and get the next playoff. Right. But they were forced to call a timeout to conserve some time, and that enabled the guys upstairs to communicate downstairs that they wanted to look at this. And they're going to call it a catch. I mean, we saw nothing to overturn that. And remember, if you're in the process of making the catch while you're going to the ground or you're contacted in the air, all those things come into play. But I thought it was pretty clear he had a couple of steps. After review, it has been determined that the receiver maintained possession with his third foot down, fumbles the football, and recovers his own fumble. It will be the New York Jets ball second down and a half yard to go. The New York Jets did use a timeout after the catch. So New York has used a second timeout. They have one timeout remaining. And the ball is at the 44, so it might come down to the right leg and foot of Nick Folk. Who did set a jet record this year with a 56-yard field goal, so plenty of range. And he had some tremendous kicks for Dallas early in his career before the wheels came off, and he got released. But you don't feel as good about Nick Folk as you did Adam Vinatieri. Second and one. Sanchez slings it to the outside. That's a first down, and Holmes 
save some time on the clock. They have the ball now at the 34 yard line and they are in field goal range. Pretty safe coverage over on the outside. It's Antonio Holmes making up for that drop he had that would have converted the one. But on the other side, it was Braylon Edwards who ran right by Jacob Lacey. The coaches in the booth will have seen that. With 36 seconds. Here's Tomlinson. Two tough yards. He gets the ball to the 32 yard line. And the. Colts. And final charge timeout Indianapolis 30 second timeout they're just trying to save some time on the other side here just in case folk makes one so with 29 seconds the ball at the 32 you'd be looking at a, about a 49 or 50 yard field goal from this spot Jets have one timeout Colts have none I'm not so sure Peyton Manning agrees with slowing this one down at this point He's saying don't make it easy. Don't let that young quarterback Mark Sanchez go over and get a little coaching here. I tell you, I would not be surprised at all if they come back to Braylon Edwards. It's a pretty safe play. If it's not there right now, you're getting man coverage on the outside that the Colts just don't feel that comfortable playing usually. Let's see. They're going to get it again. Edwards right, Holmes left. Keller sets up on the right side in the slot. Sanchez with protection. You're right. They go to Edwards. And Edwards comes down. And the officials look at each other and say it's a catch. And he's inbounds. He's inbounds at the 14-yard line. And the clock is still running because he didn't go out of bounds. He came down. He was tackled. And now they can let that clock run down after an 18-yard gain and end the game here with a field goal attempt and the Jets take a timeout. They might have been better served taking an earlier timeout just in case you have a bobbled snap and they would have had another chance. It's all or nothing at this point but there's the matchup that they love both feet down good call. The knee did hit down right there so they kept the clock running and here we go. <laughs> what, what a day of football today. Ooh. Two disparate games. The other one was a, a wild and wacky shootout. This is a game with 30 total points. With a wind up with 33. It's a 32 yard field goal to win the game and send the Jets to Foxborough. Good. Nick Falk and the Jets with Ryan saying it's Super Bowl or bust this year take one big step. Nick Falk can breathe again. What a huge pass for Mark Sanchez. They showed so much confidence in him to get that ball to Braylon Edwards and make that a much easier kick for Nick Folk. And finally, finally, the win over Peyton Manning. There's Jason Taylor, the longtime Dolphin. He moves on. Jets move on. Colts are done. No rematch of the Colts and the Saints in the Super Bowl. Both go down today. Post game report from Indy next.